Hi, and welcome back to the bakery here at Gulf Coast State College. We're in this really wonderful bakery in the Advanced Technology Center. And if you decide to come to school here, this is where you'll take your baking and pastry classes. We've got every piece of equipment you could possibly dream about using. And today, we're going to use these. All right. Today, we're going to be making one of my favorite breads called a Roman flat bread. People also call it focaccia. Now, focaccia is pretty much a staple in Italy. You're going to see it all different ways with all different ingredients. And you know what? You can make it however you want to. Today, we're going to make a real classic version with onions and rosemary. So let's talk about ingredients first. First thing you're going to need, all-purpose flour. This recipe calls for actually about one pound, two ounces of all-purpose flour. You know what? If you're going to do any baking at home, please go ahead and invest in a small, inexpensive digital scale. It's going to make your life so much easier. You want to make sure that the scale you get can also do grams along with standard measurements, okay? So there's our all-purpose flour. The next thing we're going to need, because you have to have it for focaccia, is olive oil. And if you can notice, it's got a green tinge to it. You really need to make sure that you get a good extra virgin olive oil. Please, you know what? Spend the extra money. Get good olive oil. Life's too short for cheap oil. All right? Water. Now, the recipe, and we'll put the recipe up, calls for temperature control water. You know, I spend a, quite a bit of time with my students talking about what that little statement, temperature controlled, means. In the bakery, the bread's not going to wait for you. So when the yeast starts rising, the only thing that can actually slow it down or speed it up is temperature. So what we try to do is come up with a temperature of the water that's going to allow our bread to move or rise in the time frame that we want it to. So today I'm using just lukewarm water, and I'll explain a little bit more about that later. Yeast. Now, if you saw the pizza video, I talked a little bit about yeast. We're using here instant yeast. Now, the nice thing about instant yeast is I do not have to rehydrate this in the water. I can simply throw this in with my flour. That's the nice thing about instant yeast. Now, if you go to the grocery store and you see the little yellow packets of that dry yeast, that has to be rehydrated in warm water to activate it, okay? So don't confuse the two. Um, they're not by weight exactly interchangeable, but you'll notice on the side of the packet a conversion table for converting dry yeast to instant yeast to fresh yeast, all right? So make sure you understand which yeast you're using. Next, salt, kosher salt. Um, it's a little more flaky. Um, and it has a little bit of a nice bite and crunch to it. And salt is really one of the most important ingredients in this whole bread. Actually, salt is one of the most important ingredients in bread altogether because salt also controls how yeast grows. All right? Regular granulated sugar, and this is another food for the yeast. And then a little bit of crushed up fresh rosemary. My tools today are simply going to be a rubber spatula, my handy dandy plastic bowl scraper, which you need to have so that you can use to scrape the bowls, and a couple of measuring spoons. Half a teaspoon, a teaspoon, and a tablespoon. And the neat thing to realize is that I can measure all of this with just this half teaspoon. Because of course, two of these equal a whole teaspoon, all right, and three of these teaspoons equals a tablespoon. So I can measure everything with just one of these. So if you're ready, let's make some bread. All right, let's make some bread. The first thing we're going to do is take our 12 ounces of temperature controlled water and I'm going to put it in a nice clean stainless steel mixing bowl. If you want to, you could mix this right on your table. This makes it a little bit neater, okay? First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add my yeast and sugar to this just to go ahead and get it started. It makes it a little bit easier to mix the flour in. So I'm going to take my um, teaspoon measure and I'm going to actually add, if you remember, three teaspoons equal a tablespoon. So I'm going to take one, two, and make them level teaspoons if possible. Okay. Three teaspoons of that, and then I'm going to take my sugar. And my sugar is also the same amount. I don't want to mix those 
measuring um, tools. So I'm gonna take a tablespoon of sugar. Now those can be gently mixed together. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna start adding my flour. And you can add your flour just a little bit at a time. You don't wanna dump it all in at one time. Um, all we're trying to do is just mix this together. Now I know it looks kinda of goopy right now, but I'm getting ready to get my hands in there and mix all of this stuff by hand. A good rubber spatula is a really nice tool to have around. And if you'll notice, it's starting to look a little bit like pancake batter, but I haven't got all the ingredients in. What I'm gonna try to do is smooth it out a little bit at this point. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of my flour, set that aside, and I'm gonna start mixing this in. Now, this is one of the breads that my baking students have to make for their final exam. First year baking students on their, for their final exam, their practical exam, they actually have to make a bunch of bread for me. Bread and biscuits and muffins, all kinds of things to show me that what skills they've learned over the course of the semester. And we call it a practical exam. All right, so we've got our flour, our water, our sugar, and our yeast in there. And next time, next we've got to add our next ingredients. We're going to take part of our onion, not all of it, just part of our onions, and we're going to take some of our olive oil. And I'll have these measurements all for you, and we'll put them up at the end, or we'll put a link in to show you where they're at. And now I'm going to start mixing this stuff together. And you know what? Let's get our hands in there. So that's what's nice about this plastic scraper is I can use it to clean all kinds of stuff. All right, set this down. And now we'll start kneading this and mixing it. So when we're making bread, we're always going to go through the same basic steps, scale and then mix. This is our mixing stage. And we're trying to get this bread to come together to actually cause the protein inside this bread to come together. And that protein is called gluten. And I realize that there are some people that have an intolerance to gluten. Um, there are recipes out there to use different kinds of flour. Gluten is present only in wheat flour. So um, just knead this. And if you notice inside the bowl, I'm folding, pressing, and then folding it back on myself, on itself over and over again. And what you're going to notice is really quickly, this is forming into a ball. And you can use this to actually clean the dough, clean the flour. Now, we can also, we're also going to add at this point just a little bit of our salt, OK? A half a teaspoon. I do not want to have salt directly in contact with yeast that's been hydrated, OK? because it'll kill it. So we need to make sure that we're not adding our salt directly in with our yeast, okay? Especially if the yeast has been activated. All right, so now we've got all this mixed up. And you know what? We're creating a nice dough at this point. You don't need to mix this hard like you're gonna make a French bread. We're actually wanting to create a little bit of a softer bread. And we're just gonna keep folding this back over on itself and if you want to you can take it off and if you notice here I've got a nice wooden board and the wooden board is going to make everything jiggle and fly around here if I'm not careful take these things off and we're going to just keep kneading it and if you notice it's a little sticky it's not bad though it'll get a nice smooth texture to it if your hands get sticky, don't worry about it. Just rub them together or put a tiny bit of flour on and it'll all come right off your hands. Now, once you've achieved a nice, smooth, elastic dough, we're going to take this and we're going to put it back in the bowl that we were using, but we've got to add something to it. We're going to add some olive oil to the bowl and we're going to actually roll this piece of dough around in the olive oil. We're going to let it sit and ferment. The fermentation stage is when the yeast is actually starting to consume those starches, the simple sugars, and creates two things, carbon dioxide and alcohol. Okay, that's the fermentation stage. 
And what it's doing is it's creating flavor. It's also causing this dough to rise. We call that our first bench rest. And it's just going to let this dough rise. Now, the other reason behind it is as I am working this dough, I'm creating gluten. When I'm creating gluten, it makes the dough strong. And what I want to do is I want to let it relax so that I can work it a second time. So here's what's about to happen. Dough is beautiful, nice and smooth and elastic. And I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil back in this bowl. Don't even worry about the little bit of flour in the bowl. It's not going to make any difference. So got a nice smooth ball of dough. And I'm going to take, pour a little bit of my olive oil in. All right. Now I'm going to take the dough ball, set it right in there, and I'm going to roll it around so that olive oil coats it. Oh, yeah. I'm going to cover this in plastic, plastic wrap, put it in a nice, warm, and humid, if possible, spot. Now, I've got a proof box here in the bakery. At home, you may not have a proof box. Set it on top of your refrigerator. It's slightly warm, high spot in the kitchen, you have a little bit of humidity up there. If you've got a tea towel, if you don't have plastic wrap, a little tea towel to put on top of it. Let this sit for 20 minutes at least. And when we come back, we're going to spread it out into a sheet pan and do our next step, okay? So we'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back. So we've let our focaccia sit covered up in an oil bowl until it doubles, about doubles in size. It's going to take, depending on the environment you're in, it's going to take anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour. And if you can notice in our bowl, you see how much bigger it is. And you might even see a little bit of humidity and moisture inside the bowl. That tells me that the yeast is working because some of that carbon dioxide is rising up through the bowl. Oh, look at this. Beautiful. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this. And if you notice, we've got some oil in the bottom of the pan. The oil is critical. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a really nice shiny half sheet pan right here on my table. I'm going to take a little bit of my oil and put it on the sheet pan. Okay maybe another tablespoon, tablespoon and a half. Now I'm going to slide, get my hand underneath and slide. Don't turn it over. Slide it out so it's facing the same way. Scrape that oil out because if you remember, bakers are cheap, right? we we'll set this aside and now what we're going to do is the next step in making bread. So we've got scale, mix, ferment, and this is punch or degassing and all I'm going to do is spread this dough out and believe it or not this dough is going to spread out almost to the size of this whole pan and you want to spread it fairly thin you don't have to make it perfect okay this is not about making things perfect it's about learning to make bread at home all right if you notice I use my fingertips a lot poke down see how nice and stretchy the bread is that tells me that I've got really good gluten formation. Didn't need a machine at all. We did it all with our hands. Okay. When this bread was invented, there weren't any mixers. Okay. So I'm going to stretch this. And also in the process of doing this, I've coated the top with a nice sheen, and you can probably see that in the pictures, of olive oil. You can put a little bit more on if you want to but we don't want to fry the bread. So now, got that all nice and spread out. Try to get it even if you possibly can. Next thing we're going to do is our proofing stage. Now, proofing is actually proving that the yeast is good. So what's going to happen? The proof that our yeast is working is that this dough is going to rise until it's about double in size. If you have the ability to have a place where you can put it and have some warm, moist air, that'd be great. Like, wow, in your oven, turned off with maybe a cup of steaming water in there. That'll create an environment that'll heat this up and start to cause the yeast to work a little faster. Right now, this dough is probably in the 70 to 75 degree temperature range, which is great for yeast while we're working it. But when we want to get the yeast to become active, 
we need to put it into a warmer environment. And for breads, right around 100 degrees is great. Now you gotta be careful though, because the yeast will die at 138 degrees. So make sure that you don't ever get it hotter than that before you bake it, or else the yeast will die, okay? So if you don't have a proof box, don't worry about it. Set it in your oven, little cup of hot microwave water, or again, it'll take longer, but you can simply cover it with a tea towel. Now, tea towel, you may have heard that term before. It's just a very simple, soft cotton towel. And what you wanna do is put it in a bowl, cover it with flour and keep turning it over in flour until the flour really gets in and impregnates the fibers of the cotton, okay? Set it somewhere, cover it with a tea towel, and actually it will rise and proof on its own without having to sit in a warm environment like our proof box, it'll just take longer. What you're looking for is this to double in size, and it's a pretty much gonna come up and fill up this half size sheet pan, okay? So we're gonna do that, and when we come back, we're gonna doctor this up and bake it off. Wow, take a look at that. It's been in the proof box for about 20 minutes, and as you can see, it's risen up, and if we can hold it up, you can see it's actually come up above the pan in places. That's good. That tells me that the dough is, has risen and that the yeast has been proved. It's proofed. Now, here's where we're going to be a little more ginger with it. Don't slam it around. Don't drop it on your table. You want to make sure we're treating this a little gingerly. What's happened is the gluten has formed structures within this dough those structures have filled with carbon dioxide and that's what's caused the bread to rise. We wanna be really careful because any shock or slamming or banging will cause it to deflate. And we don't want that to happen because then we won't have a nice fully developed risen bread. At this point, we're gonna do a few more things to it. Yes, it's time to add even more oil, a little, just a light, you can drizzle, but yeah, just a little bit of oil on top Okay, I'm gonna sprinkle some of my onions around. And this time of year, the Vidalia onions are in, wonderful and sweet. I would be careful about some ingredients on top, things like garlic, um, because they can burn, and when garlic burns, it, it gets really um, bitter, okay? I'm gonna have out some nice, fresh, chopped, Rosemary. You know, you don't have to stop here. Sun-dried tomatoes, slices of pepperoni, pieces of prosciutto, fresh thyme, whatever you want, or none of it. But this is important. Now we're gonna come back with our kosher salt, and I know it looks like a lot. Believe me, it does, but it really isn't. Um, because we don't have that much salt in the bread, okay? And that, all in all, might have been a teaspoon, okay? Now what we're gonna do is really gently take our fingers and a couple of gentle pokes, just a couple. Don't deflate the whole bit of bread, but what I'm doing is just creating a little bit of more pockets in there. Now, as far as baking this is concerned, if you have a convection oven at home, now a convection oven is an oven with a fan that's inside, it causes the air to move. So typically in convection ovens, we have to be careful because they usually will cook about 25 degrees hotter than what they say they are. So if you've got your regular home oven, set it to 400 degrees. If you have a convection oven, turn it down to 380 or so. You're gonna put this in the oven and you're gonna let it cook for about 20 minutes. Look for a nice, gentle, even brownness. Don't let it burn, keep an eye on it. And we're gonna put it in the oven and when we come back, I'll show you how beautiful this bread can be. It's gonna make your house smell wonderful. And um, let's bake. Well, we've got it in the oven. It's been about uh, 17 minutes, which should be just about right with our nice big commercial ovens here. Let's take a look. Oh my goodness, I wish you guys could smell this. If 
focaccia. It really smells wonderful. The nice thing about this is, is that it's so easy to make. You probably got everything you need at home to make this. So make some focaccia. But what we're going to do now, let's take it out of the pan and see what it looks like. So I'm using a nice big spatula here. And if you've used enough oil, just like that. Barely even need to wash the pan, it's so clean. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this so you can see what it looks like, but as I slice off a piece of this, we can see the structure of the bread. Oh my goodness. All the nice little holes, hills and valleys, and a beautiful browning on the bottom. Focaccia can be used for a lot of things. Slice it sideways and make a sandwich out of it. You haven't had a good muffaletta sandwich until you've done it on focaccia bread. Almost anything, or if you're like me, just eat it straight out of hand, all right? So make some focaccia, all right? Your family will really, really thank you for it. So this is Chef Paul. Till next time, go make some bread.